Okay, so welcome GCSE Computer Science class to pre-release material video number two. Um, middle of the half-term holidays at the moment, so wondering what you guys are up to. Maybe you're chilling with your mates, maybe you're playing computer games, wasting time watching uh, random YouTube videos maybe, uh, going out to eat with your friends, shopping, that kind of stuff. If the answer to uh, any of those activities was yes, then uh, you got issues, yeah? Because you need to be at home, lock yourself up, and be coding, yeah? Doing some uh, pre-release stuff on Python. Now, some of you might be wondering, what's he talking about Python? I ain't got a snake. Well, uh, I'm talking about the uh, programming language. I know it's been three or four days since, uh, uh, since you've seen me, uh, and I know for some of you that's uh, a long time. Uh, but um, yeah, you need to be working on your pre-release, making sure you come back uh, day number one, knowing exactly what's going on in task number one, and maybe a little bit about task number three. And I'm going to talk you through that now. Task number through task number two, um, had a brief look at it. It's probably the most challenging of the three tasks, and I am guessing there's going to be quite a few questions. Uh, in the exam based on task number two because of the breadth and depth of the different things that you have to cover, the different programming constructs that are required in task number two um, is is uh, fairly uh, complex uh, when, when compared to task number one. So pay attention to task number two and make sure you know exactly what's going on. Now there's lots and lots of different ways you can solve task number two. Uh, and I've had a chat with some of the other teachers about how they're going um, to solve some of the issues in task number two and a lot of them have got a, di uh, a varied set of opinions which is fine uh, and I'm going to try and do uh, one of the simplest methods that I can think of um, when approaching task number two bearing in mind that you may have other ideas and you may have a different way that you want to approach it and that's absolutely fine so let's have a look at the question task number two record the names so record stands out straight away uh, the names of the people going on the outing and the amount they have paid uh, the word record uh, highlights to me that we're going to need some uh, an array or some arrays uh, because we're, trying, we're not going to record the information. The number of people that could be going on the outing could be a maximum of 39. So you can have your 36 senior citizens plus your three carers. So you're not going to have 39 variables to store the 39 potential visitors and then the 39 amounts that they may uh, or may not have paid. Uh, it, it get too complicated. So we're looking at array structures straight away. Um, so we're going to record the names and what they've paid. If they are spare place on the coach and extra people can be added, they're going to be charged at the same rate. And then this is the bit at the end, we need to calculate the money uh, that's been collected. Okay. And we need to print out a list of people at the end. So we're going to have to print off the list of arrays. So um, it doesn't sound like there's a lot going on there, but straight away, uh, I've got th I've got to start declaring uh, initializing my arrays now everything that I do in task number two uh, I'm going to do it in a different color so you know exactly where task number one uh, fits into this and where task number two fits into this so first thing is I'm going to need um, an array of uh, names and that's going to be a string uh, and I know it's going to be a maximum of one up to potentially 39 second thing that I'm going to need again I'm getting this from the first sentence is uh, how much people have paid so I'm gonna go with float because potentially they may have paid um, a, a decimal value and again it's going to be one uh, potentially up to 39 um, we're gonna need I'm gonna have to go through the array so I'm gonna need to use some looping structures um, so I know I'm gonna need to have a count variable and I'm gonna initialize that I'm gonna initialize that to one I normally would do zero but because I've started my array on 1 to 39 I'm gonna start that off on one to start off with. I can change it later on if I need, but for now I think I'll go with that. Um, I'm going to have to somehow calculate my cost per citizen, and I, I know I need to do that because this sentence over here, additional members are gonna be charged at the same price as other senior citizens. So I need to keep a track of that somewhere. So uh, let's uh, declare that as a float because we don't know what that's gonna be, and it's gonna be cost per citizen. And that's going to start off with as uh, zero. Um, I need to calculate somehow. Um, well, I need to keep a track of the size of the coach. So uh, let's do in coach size because there's different. It could be uh, one of three. So let's start that off on zero. 
Um, I'm going to need to know how many spaces are still available after uh, someone's entered uh, the number of people going on the trip. So let's do int spaces. Uh, let's do spaces left, and that's going to start for zero. Again, I've declared both of these as int, um, not not as uh, floats, because I know that you know you definitely you, you definitely have a space, or you don't have a space. You don't have half a space. You could have half a space. Sometimes I've had half a space on a couple of airline journeys I've been on, uh, but I won't go into that. Um, next thing we need to know is we're going to have to ask the user if they want to add additional people. So we're going to need some kind of answer. So let's uh, declare that. Let's do it as a string because they're going to have to type in yes or no. Uh, let's call that add because we were going to ask them, do you want to add more people or not? And let's start, start that off on uh, end to start off with. Yeah. So they're not going to add anyone to start off with. And again, we'll take the answer and we can change it. And then the last thing that we want to take in is we want a variable uh, that holds the total amount of money collected. I'm getting that from that sentence there. So let's just call that. Uh, that's potentially could be a real so in collected and let's initialize that as 0, 0.0 now some of you are going to be sitting there thinking that you know how did how did Mr. Watt figure you know all of those variables out? and I've before I've made the video I've kind of gone through how I would go about solving this problem so it, sometimes when you're programming you start coding and then you realize that, oh you need a variable for this and you need a variable for that and that's absolutely fine that is how I would normally do that I, I would leave a bit of space at the top over here and then as I work through solving my uh, my problem or coming out with a solution, I realize, oh, I need a variable for that, oh, I need a variable for that, and I would, I would just add them in at the top. So don't worry if initially you you know you don't you're not doing what I am doing in this video, whereby I'm just you know banging out all the variables and I know exactly what's going on. It's because I've already had a go at it, so I already kind of know where I'm going to be going with this particular um, with this particular solution. Now. Uh, come, uh, following on from task number one, I, I realized when I finished task number one, this particular section here, if, they, if the information is, the number of senior citizens they've entered is incorrect, it still would print off this over here, it would still print off the co cost uh, of the trip is, and then the cost would be zero, and then that would also be zero. In fact, you may get an error message here because you're trying to divide something um, uh, by something that potentially has numbers in that could lead to an error. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm just going to add in um, a uh, just a little sentence that says exit. And what that does is, if it's incorrect, it's just going to jump out of the program. So it doesn't then do this. We don't have any problems with that. Again, it's a, just a minor thing, but it's just one of those little things that bothers me. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to keep a track of the coach size. So I know that if there's that many people, Oh, if there's if if that uh, if there's that many people or less, then the coach size is going to be fourteen. Um, now I haven't included my carers in this. You can if you want to, but I'm just going to go uh, without carers for the moment. So I'm going to include coach size. Coach size is going to equal fourteen, and then if I go along here, then my coach size is going to be uh, twenty four. And again, all this information is coming from uh, the rows in the table. Coach size is going to be 36. So I've got my coach sizes sorted out. Um, this is not going to work in, uh, pre in task number two because later on uh, I, need, I need to use this number for a few other things. So it's better if I just store it in a variable. And that's why I created this variable over here, cost Per citizen did I create that variable I didn't create that variable so let's just create that oh no I did create it there it is so cost per citizen uh, cost let's change the color to that okay cost per citizen is gonna still equal that but now I, I I hold it in a variable and that's because later down the line I'm gonna need it for a few other things so it's best just to hold it in a variable so let's do cost per Per citizen. Okay, let's get that. Uh, okay, that's that done. Now, uh, the other thing I'm going to have to keep a track of is how many spaces there are left in the coach. And I know that because over here, once you've added the initial round of people, uh, there's an option to add a few more people. So I'm going to have to keep a track of that. Again, let me just do that above here as well before we start messing around with entering the information in. So the spaces that are left in the coach is going to be, did I declare variable called spaces left? Uh, yep, I did spaces left, is going to equal, 
um, it's going to be whatever the coach size is and I get coach size from over here that that or that and it's going to be coach size and I want to take away the number of uh, senior citizens yeah senior citizens again I haven't included carers in that I've done that by purpose because I've declared my coach size here based on the fact that I'm not looking at carers you can do it with you can do it without it just means you've got to amend these variables uh, okay so I've got how many space I've got left in the coach and I've uh, calculated my cost per citizen it would be useful over here just to let the user know the, the maximum size of the coach so the size of the coach is and it's going to drop in the uh, coach size okay so what I've done now is I've collected all the information that I'm going to require to then do the next bit. So I am going to have to store the names, okay, into my array over here. I'm going to store the amounts that I've paid into my flow, my paid array over here. Uh, I have kept the tabs of the coat size and how much spaces they are left. I've done all of that over here. Uh, I know the cost per citizen, and I'm going to need that here because if there are additional people coming on the trip, they are charged at the same price. So I keep a record of that from all of this data collection that I've done uh, at the start. Uh, I can keep a tabs on how many money I've collected in my collected variable over here. And I'm gonna print a list of uh, items, or a list of people that are coming on the trip uh, through my, I'll just go through the index of the arrays of the names list and I'll, I'll lock them out here. The only other variable that I have here is an add variable because I want to ask the user, you know, do, do you want to add any more people on? There's this many spaces and then if they type in yes or no, I can then carry on with that. So this is all of my uh, collection of information, collection of uh, data stored in variables that I'm going to need for my second section. And the second section gets quite interesting because the second section is all about working with arrays. Now, depending on the language that you use, um, there are potential shortcuts that languages uh, have within them that let you, um, for example, add things to uh, an array uh, without having to declare the size of the array. You could add a whole um, list of items in a single array just by using a single sentence and so I'm gonna go and do it the long way I'm doing it because I just want to be careful that um, given any potential question in an exam uh, you, you can answer the question the most difficult way so I'm gonna jump onto the second page over here okay just to highlight that we're moving into the management of the arrays so got all the information I now want to enter the names and the number of um, uh, the prices of each uh, senior citizen how much they've paid to go on the trip now with arrays it's best to use a for loop and we use a for loop because we already know the size of an array in advance at the top over here I've declared the array size to be 1 to 39 and a for loop is quite clever in the fact that we, we, we tell it in advance the number of iterations that we want it to go through in a um, through an array so I'm going to use a for count a counts going to be my um, variable that manages which index of the array I'm looking at. So for count within the range of uh, one to let's go total people and it's total people because I need to keep a t tabs of the names of the senior citizens as well as the carers. So for the number of total people uh, print a message and I want the message uh, just saying you know enter uh, enter name of person and then let's do count so it'll be one and then two and then three so it just gives a bit more of a nice interface uh, so enter name of person one uh, and then I want to read that into my into my array so I'm going to read that into I think I called it names yep names and I'm going to put it into the index count so the first time around the loop it puts it into count one and then the second time it puts it into count two and count and then count and then three and then four and then five so it just manages um, exactly which index of the array the name is going to go into. I, will, I then want to enter how much they've paid. So enter amount paid. And again, I want to read that 
into the second array which is called paid and again let's put that into account now with pseudo code uh, and with a lot of programming languages you know when you're working with an array or when you're working with um, a, a single variable because of the square brackets as soon as you put square brackets uh, you know that we're working with an array so just get that get that correct uh, when you're writing out your pseudo code so I have now in this section over here okay added in all of the names of the people that are going on the trip and the amount that each person has paid and I've stored them in two separate arrays okay so now what I need to do is I need to check uh, whether or not there are any other spaces left okay that you know someone else might want to come so maybe you you know the, let's for example argument say say 10 people come there's still four spaces available so then the user needs to be asked do you want to enter any any other people now we don't really know how many spaces they're going to be available it depends on how many people we start off with and the code size so we can't use a for loop because we don't really know um, or it, it's not advisable to use a for loop because we don't really uh, know how many times we're going to go through the iteration we could use a repeat loop but remember a repeat loop checks for the exit condition at the end which means that you would still potentially have to enter one extra person in and then check at the end but what about if the first time round your loop um, you're already on the maximum number of people that can go in a coach if the number of people going on the trip is 14 senior citizens plus your two carers which is 16 and the coach size is 16 we don't then want to ask the user uh, do you want to enter any additional um, people to go on the trip because there's no space for them so the best looping structure to use would be a while loop because we can check for the condition at the start of uh, of entry point into the loop so I'm going to say that while um, while the coach size is not equal to uh, the number of senior citizens okay what do I want to do so the first thing is I want to let the user know that there's um, there's still spaces on the trip yeah so let's say there are uh, let's put the name of a variable over here there are spaces left on the coach okay now spaces left is a variable it gets spaces left from here when it calculates how much they, there's there's left so first thing we're telling the user there's enough space on, left on the trip the second thing I would do is the user is going to want to know how much does it cost now remember you don't you, the user doesn't uh, enter the amount paid the question explicitly states over here that extra people can be added they are charged at the same price as the other senior citizens so we already know the price of the, the cost of senior citizens because we calculated over here cost per citizen and that's why we've got to hold it so we let's print off another message and you can combine these into one uh, super sentence but I'm going to do it separately so you can see where I'm going with each one so the cost of an additional space and then let's whack in the uh, cost per citizen variable okay so now we're telling them there's these many spaces there's this many costs and now we want to ask them do they want to add any more people in there so let's ask them uh, do you want to add any more uh, senior citizens citizens okay now here we're going to help the user again over here they only they're you know they're only allowed to enter y or n okay let's go with something like that okay um, and then we're gonna we're gonna take their answer and we're gonna read it into the uh, it was the add variable okay okay uh, it was the add over here so we read it into add now we now need to check so we want to use a selection statement so if add is equal to uh, n so it means if they don't want to add any more senior citizens then we'll just let them know so let's print a message okay no more senior senior citizens have been added okay and then we want to totally break out of this while loop so we just break out of the loop and that's done and dusted 
However, if they've put something else in, we're assuming the other the other thing, the only other thing they can put in would be a Y, okay, uh, then we need to give them the option to add this next set of names. So let's just take that. And so enter the name of the person count and then it reads it into the count. Now remember, count over here, let's say they've added in 10 people, it's going to be on 10. By the time it gets here, it's still on 10. So it'll then just move on to the next count that's available. So we're, we're fine in terms of managing the indexes in the array. We don't need to mess around with count. Payment now is a little bit different because they don't enter um, they don't enter the amount uh, that the old uh, person is going to pay. We just automatically initialize it based on what everyone else is paying. So if we just put paid count, okay, is going to equal uh, the cost per citizen. And we calculated this earlier on. Okay, so we're adding uh, that into the next index. Okay, so that's the payment done. Now, we want to add one more person onto senior citizen. Okay, so senior citizen is going to equal senior citizen plus one. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to have to do. Uh, and we're going to need to also um, keep a track now of whether the coach is potentially full or not and that's why we've added one to senior citizen so if by this time okay the coach size is equal to senior that senior citizen is equal to senior, to senior citizen okay meaning that if the coach is now full we just want to print a message off and we just tell the user, okay, coach, full. And then what will happen is it will go back around the loop over here. And because coach size will now equal the number of senior citizens, it will no longer allow them to go through this option. If, however, there is spaces available, then it'll come over here. Coach size doesn't equal senior citizens. So it'll say there are this many spaces left on the coach. Um, the problem that we have over here, of course, we haven't taken uh, one of spaces left. So let's take spaces, spaces left equals spaces left, take away one. So that way here, every time you go around the loop, it'll take one of uh, each uh, space. He'll ask them, the cost of the space is still going to be the same. He'll, add, he'll ask them again, do you want to add another one? And if they say no, then it breaks out. And if it's yes, then it goes around the loop again. Okay, uh, and then takes, uh, it checks whether there's still spaces left, and then it just carries on going round and round and round until they basically put N over here, or until that condition is met. So that happens there, coach is full, and then it doesn't re enter the loop. So that's that done understood. So this whole section here deals with this section over here. It deals with are there spaces on the coach? Yes, there are add extra people if they want and charge them the same price that's what this does and if they don't want to add any more people then it's fine it just says they just put n and then it exits out the loop so the last thing that we then need to do is we need to calculate the total amount of money collected and we want to print a, out a list of people that go on the outing so this is this is nice and easy nothing too complicated in this we've got we've already got an array that's uh, kept a record of all the amounts that people have paid that array is called paid now, we, we need to reinitialize our count to 1 because if we don't initialize our count to 1, count will be on whatever the last person here was. And then obviously, when you try and uh, go through another array, it'll start, for, it'll start off at where count was. So then obviously, you don't get the right answer. So let's reinitialize count to 1. And then we're going to do again for count in range, for count in range 1 two different ways we can do this i'm just going to go 39 okay because then i know that we're just going to go around the whole loop the whole array and it's going to go till the end so for counting range 1 to 39 we've got a variable called collected it's going to equal whatever's already in collected okay and we're going to add to that whatever's in the paid array uh and the index is going to be count so it's going to go around okay 39 times and it's going to basically Add everything up in every single index to the collected variable. It makes sense then to just uh, output 
for the user. So um, the question doesn't ask this, but um, you know it just makes sense to me um, to do that. So the amount collected is, and then let's put collected. Okay, so that deals with the first part of what we need to uh, um, manage in terms of collecting calculating the amount of money collected second thing we need to do is output the names of people in the array now i know some languages will allow you to write a one line statement and it just prints off everything in the array but we're, we're not going to do it we're not going to take the easy road we're going to go through every single index in the array and then we're going to yeah we're going to output uh, it one at a time so let's just print off what we're doing over here so we're printing off uh helping the user again the names of the people going on the trip are Okay, notice that I didn't put senior citizens in there because senior citizens are going to be printed along with the carers. So I don't want there to be any uh, misunderstanding there. So print is going to the names of the trip are let's reinitialize count back to one again because we're going to go, we want to stop back off uh, the first index of the array and then let's use a nice uh, for loop. So for count in range, uh, let's just do one to 39. Again, you can be clever about this and there are different ways that you can do it until. You can you can sort of do it so that it only prints off up until where there's actually something in an index. But let's not worry about that. Let's just go through the whole um, whole array, and we're just going to print off uh, the names and count. Okay, uh, and then okay, just to make it easy for the user, let's print off a, a, a blank line or space so that there's a space between the names, and then we go next count. So it go, goes back around the loop. And then it goes on the next one, the next one, it does it 39 times. This section here deals with the last bit of the question, which is enter out everything, uh, all the names of the people that are going into the array. So there you are. You can see it's quite complicated. There's a lot of things going on in here. There's a while loop here. There's a for loop here. There's, you know, working with index in the uh, arrays. You've got reading into arrays. You've got printing from arrays. Uh, you've got adding um, indexes from an array. So you can see that th this is a very, very meaty question uh, in the sense of uh, the different possibilities of what the examiners are expecting from you for this. So uh, have a go at this, you know, code this, make sure it works, test it out, test it so that, you know, remember you're trying to break it and, and you're putting a data in there and, you know, you're testing for correct data, you're testing for incorrect data, you're testing for boundary data and then uh, see if you can get this working. So there we are. That's task two done, done and dusted. This is going to be the most complex uh, segment of uh, the, 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 the three task um, pre-release. So yeah, enjoy yourselves, get on with that, uh, and then uh, show me what you can do.